London was recently host to the launch of Arindam Chaudhary's latest brainchild, Indian Power Brands, a Marcom and IIPM think tank initiative. Indian Power Brands is a salutation to all the companies and brands which are putting India to the world map. Stringent two-phase research across 27 cities in the country defines the Indian power brands. We've chosen London as the venue for the first and the special Indian power brands because London is not just the melting pot of all cultures, but it is also the epicenter of all business activities worldwide. The electrifying Indian tiger is actually, actually roaring as of today. And we really, really feel that the companies who have made it into power brands do make a mark worldwide. This is the session on the topic India rising. As you all know, India is the seventh largest country by geographical size, the second largest country by population. It's the biggest democracy in the world. It's the ninth biggest country in terms of nominal GDP and the fourth largest country in terms of purchasing power parity. On this planet, if there is any place where there is potential for growth, it is India. And there is no debate that India will become a superpower. But the debate here today is how soon and how good. India rising means that we redefine our poverty line to a respectable level so that we do not keep people destitute and call them poor and say that only 26% live below poverty line. India rising is a dream where we have a poverty line where we accept that today 60% of India lives below that respectable poverty line. We have a vision that in 15 years time there would be maybe just 10% or less than that living below poverty line like in China today is. In one stroke, they redefined their poverty line last week by three times and they have about 10% living below poverty line. For me, India Rising is a dream where in a little longer run, when I am driving on the streets of Delhi, I should see like the way I see in South Korea, 49 out of the 50 cars on the roads are Korean cars. Not because they are overtly patriotic, not because they're compromising on quality, but because they look wonderful, they are absolutely brilliant in technology, they look good, they deliver quality. For me, India Rising is going beyond just topping the list of billionaires in the world. It's about Topping the list of global brands is about being extremely proud of buying Indian products, not because I'm compromising on the quality, but knowing that it's a fantastic substitute. And when there is a fantastic Indian substitute, why should I buy an American product or a Japanese product or even a Korean product? We become a nation which, when it becomes rich 25 years later, and when it becomes developed, it is not just appreciated for its products and its brands and its billionaires, but for the contribution it makes to the poorest of poor around the world. How much we have contributed to the survival of the weakest, not just in India, but around the world, and how much we have humanized the entire world with our Indian ethos, culture, and values, which talks about world as being a small village. India was never as dreadful and desperate as it was made out. After all, India has produced enough food to feed itself for the last over 20 years. The Indian entrepreneur, whether in India or abroad, is the best protection India has against what many fear, a new type of economic colonialism. India has the potential to emerge as the fifth largest consumer market in 2025. Even as we add 12,000 PhDs, 600,000 engineers, and 8.5 million graduates per year, mean that more Indians are suitable for global employment. McKinsey Global, in a study, found that 25% of the Indian engineers are employable in MNCs versus 10% Chinese. Ten years from now, the euro probably isn't going to be around. But ten years from now, India will definitely still continue on its amazing trajectory as a global economic superpower.
And India is the best example of one of my favorite sayings that some people fail because of and other people succeed in spite of. You know, there was a time when someone like Henry Kissinger stated that India is a banana republic. And it was in 2006 that the same individual stated that the world needs India. There is a world of opportunity that awaits to ensure that India continues to grow and succeed, where there is accountability and where there is transparency, and where we break down those barriers and build partnerships and trade relations. We became a part of a presidential campaign in the United States. At that time, the BPO industry was worth less than 400,000 people, purely because of what could happen. Because what the Indian mind and the Indian capability could bring to the party. So as India goes from 50 billion to 250 billion on BPO and IT industry, the opportunity of participating in India rising is huge. There's all sorts of uh, drama made about communalism versus secularism and so on. I think these are all fake issues. India needs a consensual politics, but a consensual government of the, of the national parties. I do believe, and I, I long ago argued this, only we had Congress and BJP in a super coalition uh, ruling a country. I think India could solve a lot of its problems. India Rising Session was followed by Parbrand's Corporate Leadership Awards and Marketing and Communication Awards.